Nevertheless, what can we do with that? Well, we can <coughs> we can now study GT fourteen R, a family of hyperbolic matrix on M. So I view M as a fixed smooth manifold with a family of matrix. Yeah, and then I get. Uh, I get a family of developing maps. And then uh, having, a, having such a family, they behave, uh, they behave somehow as germs of diffeomorphisms in the following sense. Uh, I can take now def t inverse This is a germ of an automorphism of M tilde. It's not globally defined maybe for any t, but for each point, it is defined near that point for a small time. And I can take the tangent vector to this, uh, to this germ of diffeomorphisms. This is called, uh, I call it V. Is a vector field of M on, on M tilde, I'm sorry, very important. It's a vector field on M tilde. So by giving myself a family of Riemannian matrix, I get a vector field on the universal cover, which kind of measures how my, my matrix are moving. Good. And, uh, and what do I do with that? I take, uh, take now the, in the, the canonical list of V which I remind you was defined as V plus I, uh, V minus I over two <coughs> curl of V, which belongs in, which belongs to the complex vector fields on M tilde. Yeah, this is the canonical lift. And, uh, and uh, so I have a section now In that, in that vector bundle E I was talking about previously, the bundle of infinitesimal killing vector fields. And I can take its, uh, its uh, uh, covariant derivative. So now this is a, uh, well, it's in lambda 1 of M tilde and E. And claim is that this, this vector, this uh, form descends to M Okay, so this will uh, this will lead up to will lead to the advertised cohomology one class on M. But that's uh, that's something we, which needs to be proved. Okay, so why uh, it's not clear why it descends, but why is it closed? Well, it's closed. Is, is closed with respect to the with respect to the twisted the run operator by the flat connection D. We said we said uh, since we are in hyperbolic case, this connection is flat. Then we can twist your Duram. You can twist anyway your Duram operation with a connection, but you don't get a complex. But since D is flat, yeah, maybe this this is worth writing. So. Let's let's recall the definition. The, uh, the the Ram differential of a form tensor a section in a bundle is by definition 
to the alpha tensor S plus minus 1 to alpha. If this is a tensor together with the exterior product, ds. ds is, has a one-form component which gets multiplied exteriorly to uh, there's an alpha here, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the usual way to extend a connection on, uh, on uh, forms, tensor by your bundle. But d, d squared is equal to zero if and only if d is flat. This is a general fact. So here we are in that setting. So we get a twisted Deram complex, which gives us cohomology. Maybe I should say here with respect to d, to this connection. So basically, um, yeah, so I wanted actually to clarify a little this proposition. And then I wanted to, uh, yeah, then um, I, will, I will normalize. So a priori, when you have this non-compact setting, this omega is totally uncontrollable because you can, you can change your family of metrics by any family of diffeomorphisms of your manifold. So your form is just out of control, but you can normalize it by the same fact, since you have freedom of choosing diffeomorphisms. Those are called trivial, trivial deformations. And then I, uh, we will show that when the deformation is made through metrics which preserve cone angles and conformal structure at infinity, omega can be chosen L2. So the next steps are going to be um, the angle fixed angles and conformal structures fixed by GT then we can choose omega to be L2 that's one step and then the second step is show vanishing of this L2 cohomology, which is an analytic statement. So actually, so far everything works in all the cases I described before. So there is nothing new so far. So what, what the hard part is showing first that, can, that you can normalize your, your one deformation, one form to be L2. And second, that in this setting, which is kind of incomplete, you still can prove uh, L2 vanishing like that, or L2 vanishing of cohomology. Yeah, so uh, all this was kind of algebraic. We're just talking about killing vector fields, which are just Lie algebra. But, uh, uh, oh yes, and uh, yeah, I forgot to say, to make the relation with, uh, so before I, I uh, look in this proposition, let me go to the, to the proof of <coughs> like the infinitesimal version of most of rigidity. So assume everything is fine so far, that so we understand that deformations uh, so assume we know already that tangent space to the deformation space is equal to H1. Uh, then in the compact case, this H1 is going to be, by Hodge theory, is the kernel of d d plus d d star squared. Yeah, this is usual. This is the 
the, the D Laplacian uh, no. so I, I take the adjoint of this uh, Deram twisted Deram take the square this is equal to D D delta D plus delta D D up D yeah this operator here then this is usual Hodge theory well with coefficients in a flat bundle there's no no difference between the classical and this version of Hodge theory and then uh, there is an observation by Matsushi I'm sorry for Matsushima and Murakami so by two Japanese sounding names they remind they, they remark the following fact that this operator <coughs> is uh, positive. Uh, so this is the uh, okay is D nabla delta nabla plus delta nabla D nabla plus some operator Q. Q is a strictly positive endomorphism of the bundle E. So maybe I should. Uh, and then the corollary. Corollary is there is no Hodge cohomology, so there is no Deram cohomology, so there are no no three, no infinitesimal deformations. Let's say uh, a sort of proof for that, for this Matsushima Murakami identity. So uh, he writes, uh, they write D is Nabla plus T, where T U phi or T V phi is just I V exterior phi, a cross product with phi. Yeah, so they, they separate this. Uh, this extra part of the connection. Then they write uh, D, D adjoint is equal to delta nabla plus T star. Yeah, where uh, D nabla adjoint is by definition delta nabla. Okay, so nothing really important so far. So then the Laplacian of D is um, D nabla plus T delta nabla plus T star plus delta nabla plus T star D nabla plus T. And now you get first the connection Laplacian for the Levi-Civita connection. Then you get D nabla T star plus T delta nabla plus delta nabla T plus T star D nabla plus T T star plus T star T. And their observation is that these terms go away. This is just zero. So you're left with these two components. This is non-negative. And this one, they prove it's... Uh, I'm sorry, this is true. This is true for all for all k from zero to three. This is true for forms, not not just for uh, sections. Okay. So this part is zero. And then uh, uh, now uh, a lemma to prove the Matsushima Murakami uh, result is T T star plus T star T greater than or equal to one. It's clear cl these are clearly endomorphisms. There is no derivation inside, no differentiation. Zero order differential operator. Okay. 
let's prove this for k equals 0, the degree of the forms, so on zero forms. Uh, what is t? t of phi is just uh, i sum of e i tensor uh, e i cross phi in a orthonormal, local orthonormal basis. This is actually point by point. We are in Euclidean space. E i is the canonical base in the Euclidean space. That's the dual base. Then uh, Then T star of uh, alpha tensor phi is equal to, so I'm only looking at uh, a pure section, no form. Here I have to look at the one form tensor section. So there's a minus coming from I. Then the dual of exterior power is contraction. And then the dual of taking the cross product is minus the cross product. Okay, so the two minus signs become a plus sign. So we compute T star T phi is equal to sum of EI, so I squared, which is minus one, I squared, let's say. EI contraction is EJ. Tensor EI cross EJ cross phi. Okay, for I and J running from 1 to 3. And this is minus 1, not the index squared. So what happens? Uh, this is just sum of, uh, sum for I equal 1 to 3. EI cross E i cross phi, and I claim that this minus sign, and I claim this is just two phi. Why is that? So phi is a complexified vector bundle, but clearly all this commutes with complex multiplication. So let's say phi is just, <coughs> let's phi is equal to E j. Yeah, then E i cross phi is just E k, assuming that i j k is an ordered basis of the, I mean, EI, EJ, EK is an ordered basis of the uh, tangent plane. And then EI cross EK is minus EJ. So we are falling back onto phi, but with a minus sign, which will cancel our minus sign. But when phi is EI itself, the cross product gives us zero. That's why only two of these contribute. And we get this two, which is greater than, yeah, so two greater than one which is uh, proving the Matsushima-Murakami result for k is zero. In the, in the higher form case, it's not so simple. It's a computation. One has to do it. No, 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 for the, I'm sorry, for M with particles. For the manifolds we're looking at. Should we fix cone angles? No, you don't need to fix cone angles. They are fixed because they're no, the, the, how to say, the deformation is now encoded in the one form, omega. So there is no more deformation. You're on a fixed manifold. You have a deformation one form, omega, which you manage to make L2 by the first step. And then, by this analytic step, you show it's zero. It, you show it's exact, which, it means, which means that it comes from a trivial family of deformations. So you fix cone angles, right? Don't bundle the angles. Um, ah, yeah, okay. Omega is a deformation one form for a family of deformations fixing the cone angles and conformal structures at infinity. But the notation <coughs> you wrote there, it, it captures all the kind of 
Here? Yeah. No, because in general the formations are not going to give you a L21 form. Um, certainly changing the cone angles give ri gives rise to deformations which are not uh, deformation one forms which are not L2 but moreover which cannot be put into L2 form by a family of diffeomorphisms otherwise this would contradict our corollary meaning which says that the cone angles parameterize the deformation so there are deformations if you modify the cone angle So, but I think the key of the the key of the proof is understanding this form omega. So I should uh, maybe, ah yeah. So, okay. So we just finished proving the fact that closed three manifolds are uh, are hyperbolically rigid, at least on the infinitesimal level, because. Their deformations, now there is no more L2 involved. I mean, there is an L2, but hidden. Um, deformation is given by a form here, which is exact. And I didn't finish that part. I should prove that exact forms correspond to trivial deformations. And so there is no, uh, there is no infinitesimal non-trivial deformation of a three-manifold, compact three-manifold. I'm sorry for being... Uh, yeah, is that? He, he proved that? Uh-huh, okay. So then Mosto was much later proving the global rigidity. Okay. So I guess it makes sense. They developed all this uh, uh, machinery for proving this infinitesimal rigid. Okay. So I think I should uh, postpone uh, discussing that proposition about the one form until after lunch and I should maybe give the definition of the manifolds we work with. So, so far there was a lot of general machinery but also some words about them. complete metric space uh, made of two parts. The regular and the singular part. Uh, <coughs> MR is a hyperbolic And here I should add non-compact. It's a hyperbolic three manifold. And the singular part is a geodesic graph. It is geodesic in the sense of distance for the for the ambient distance uh, so this geodesic graph is this is the conical locus of a conical metric of, on the regular part Cone angles are all less than pi. And moreover, we assume uh, there's a compact Non 
elementi geodesico uh, geodesically convex subset which is a sort of convex uh, convex core so this assumption eliminates cusps from uh, from the picture because uh, yeah, whenever you allow cusps, geodesics can go in, in there, so the, conve the this geodesically convex subset will not be compact. Okay, so for, uh, yeah, this graph uh, is a finite graph. Have you got uh, this dimension and the one of the Without this one? Yeah, I mean, uh, we don't have any trouble if we just give the description of the non-compact part of the manifold just like that. But if we want to like to have a self-contained definition and then deduce something, then we need to assume that. So your, your, your question is if we can allow cusps? Uh, so I think cusps don't, pro don't produce any problem whatsoever. But then they produce a problem for us in th with this definition. So yeah. Um, yeah, we don't know about cusps. Okay, so I'll stop here and uh, 